Hey everyone, welcome back to Mailshake's case study video series. Today I have a Mailshake customer, John, here today. John, do you mind taking a, a second to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks Maggie for having me. Uh, my name is John Heltzel. Um, I work uh, with startups here in Silicon Valley uh, and uh, I end up, they call me a fractional VP of business development, which has a lot of different ways of uh, pursuing things. but. The bottom line is uh, we try to get startups off the ground and launched into their initial customers, initial partners, initial customer success. And a lot of that involves sending email. So I use Mailshake quite a bit. Yeah. So how, where do you use Mailshake in your process to send those emails? Well, oftentimes, you know, uh, having been in Silicon Valley for many years now, uh, I'm relatively well connected to people. But uh, not all these people are interested in what I'm doing. I mean, they kind of know, John, hey, what startup do you have for me lately? And so uh, they usually want to want to hear from me. But, you know, if I have 100 people to reach out to, you know, do I want to send out individually 100 different emails, even to people that I know or people that are maybe second connections on LinkedIn? Not really, but I can easily... Uh, you know, export those out of my own database um, and upload them to Mailshake and have Mailshake send them out in a nice even pace um, and without some, you know, unsubscribe at the bottom. So you know, it looks like I'm just spamming them. It's like, no, an actual email. And these are emails that I would actually write. And what I found is I was actually doing these hundred emails myself. Oh my god! And I found Mailshake was able to do this very simply and easily without uh, this, you know, unsubscribe at the bottom and all that. And it would look like it was coming from me. And I started getting lots of response rates. And so it just made it a lot easier for me to, to automate that process and get the word out about the latest startup I'm working with. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, no one has time. I was the same exact way as you, a, a, not a fractional VP of business development, but not helping startups, but I was an SDR sending manual emails it took me hours hours on hours just to send those out um you know and it wasn't until i found a tool ex actually until i started working at mailshake where i was like this is pretty cool so glad it's saving you time there um you know and it, it, you don't have time to really go through and write those manually uh but you still want to have that personal touch like you said removing that unsubscribe because it makes a big difference when you're you're sending that email over to someone and wanting them to respond when they see that unsubscribe, it doesn't really look that authentic or personal um, because it's coming right from your email account. So yeah. you talked a little bit about that. What, I guess, like specific tools or features about Mailshake do you feel like is giving you success? So the, uh, I mean, Mailshake's just easy to use, right? Uh, obviously, I personalize it, meaning Fred, I'd like to talk to you about my latest startup. Mm -hmm. you know, Fred, I see you're now at XYZ Company. Uh, and I always joke that you know the the world is like shifted multiple times in the many years mm -hmm. i've been here and uh and and everybody has stood up shifted over and sat back down and that's where linkedin and great so i can track you know where they are in the new ones and maybe personalize a little but the reality is, is that i just want to connect with fred and uh, see where he's at reconnect with tell him what what i'm up to and uh and share kind of the good word on this latest startup that i'm working with so you know, it's very, I try to keep it pretty simple. Um, I also keep it pretty short and sweet. Um, I don't do oftentimes very many uh, reconnects like, uh, you know, the, hey, you know, they have this saying, you know, you got to hit them eight times. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't get anywhere near that. I mean, maybe a second time, maybe a third if it's just uh, someone that I, but, but I wait a, several months. In fact, Mailshake, doesn't have this functionality. I think it's 30 days is the Latin, the latest. And mm. at one point it might've gotten to 90, but then they brought it back to 30. Um, I'm, I don't hammer people. Like that's mm. not my style. That's not my approach. Uh, I reach out to people if they want to uh, reply. Great. If they don't, I might remind them a second time, but I'm not looking to, to just hit them eight times because uh, frankly, I want them to reply back to me. These are people I know or people that are friends of friends. And so there's no reason to, to really, uh, to, if they're not interested, then they're just not replying. And I respect that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, there's always research out there that, hey, you have to have eight follow-ups or seven follow-ups. And it really comes down to the people that you're reaching out to. And like you said, it's friends of friends, people that you've worked with before. 
people that you're definitely connected with on LinkedIn, which is viewing their profile or grabbing information from their profile is like a, a step in a sequence, as people would call it itself, of just looking at their profile or maybe interacting with some of their content. So it's not really needed to have that many follow-ups in there. But yeah, adding personalization is always going to help. Any other tools you feel like you can't live without with MailShake besides automating or personalizing? So I mean, I it's always fun to see the open rates and the clicks and things like that. But I recently actually turned those off and experimenting. I can't prove that uh, I'm getting more responses, but I think I am. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of a gut feel. So that, that was kind of the latest interesting piece. Um, and then, you know, just the the having the 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 mail shake be straightforward and simple. You know, I can, you know, divide up all the campaigns and know what the response rates are. And and they, the the other thing that actually is really the cleanup tool has actually been really helpful. Um, I've used other cleanup tools. This one having it built in works pretty well. Uh, and so, you know, that's just another way of reducing the number of bounces, right, that go out. And uh, so I kind of I like to like to see that. Uh, play in there. So that, that's that been helpful as well. Yeah. And it's just fact checking that information that you grab from LinkedIn. So like you said, you can see people who have moved around companies. Sometimes they're a little delayed with, you know, updating that information and then keeps it all clean for you there. So you talked about, you know, the method that you use with MailShake, some, you know, some ways that you feel like it's helpful. So what's the actual success that you're seeing? I know you turned off open tracking, but what kind of open rates were you regularly seeing before? Yeah, I mean, I was getting, you know, 60, 70 percent uh, reply rates uh, or actually, let's see here, open rates. And then the reply rates were probably you know, 15, 20 percent. Uh, it was it was pretty good because, you know, people are wanting to hear from me. They want to understand what's going on. And, and some are open and some aren't. Uh, in fact, some of them, some of the partners that we worked with, I would get 100 percent open rates. And I remember. People like, like our marketing team was like, you're kidding me. A hundred, every one of those people opened your email. They, <laughs> I've never seen that before. So it was, it was actually kind of fun to, to, to play with that. But that's, I guess that's testament to, I try to really connect with people and they really want to read and they see the name John Eltzel and they're like, okay, I'll at least open it and see what he has to say these days. And, and that's, I think the, you know, all we have in this, I'm a big Warren Buffett fan, right? And all we have in our life is reputation, right? And yeah. uh, and if you, you keep that, it takes, you know, years and years to build it up and five minutes to destroy it. And uh, so I try to not, not be, uh, hopefully not destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's happening anytime soon, John. But yeah, I think it just goes to show that, you know, cold email, a lot of people always want to say, this is like a couple of years ago, that cold email is a numbers game. And you should be reaching out to a ton of people that you don't know. And I actually think like the best type of outreach that people can do in sales is tapping into either your own network. But if you're just starting out, like I've only been in sales for about five years, I tapped into like my CEO's network or my VP of sales network, and they provided introductions for me. So I think that really does go a long way because like you said, once people actually see your name, they're like, all right, I'm going to open this. And then the next level of that, of not only getting 70% open rates and sometimes even 100, which is awesome, you get like that 20, 30% reply rate that you're actually writing an email that not only people are interested in, but you're giving them a really clear, actionable call to action where they know exactly what next step to take. And I know we talked about this a little bit before we jumped on, but it sounds like Calendly has been working super, super well for you. Yeah, it has. I mean... The other thing is, is, you know, I always say this to people, you know, when Twitter first started, right? We live in a 140 character world yeah. and we have a, attention spans of a gnat. So I try to keep <laughs> really, really short and sweet. And if they're interested, then great. If they're not, then they're not. And, you know, the, the, the second piece of it is that they reply to you and say, yeah, John, tell me more. How's your schedule look? Or here's my schedule or here's my Calendly link, which I'd love to get, or I'll send them my Calendly link. You know, I, in the past, I would just say, how's your schedule look? Well, mm. I mean, we always get those emails and then you got to go into your calendar and dig up five or six different <laughs> times. And then you have to type it in and, and send it back to them. And then none of them work and you go back and forth and back and forth. And, 
I just, when Calendly came out, and it, as you can imagine, I work with multiple startups, so I have multiple calendars, so I had to sync all of those together. Calendly does that very easily. Super. And so I can just say, boom, here's my schedule. They pick it, and like in two seconds, they've got a, a, a date and a time, and it's in my calendar, and it's a Zoom or a Google Meet or whatever it is. Uh, huge, huge value there. So um, yeah, it's been a great way to efficient efficiently set up calls um for myself totally yeah you said it just from the journey before like hey you used to ask people hey what's your schedule look like that takes them to think like uh i gotta go check my schedule they click out of your email they go to their schedule and guess what they forget to respond to you um i've had it i've done it before just even myself when i'm scheduling things or someone sends me something so calendly is always excellent for doing that but Amazing. Well, we're happy that you're getting success with Mailshake, John. Thank you so, so much for for coming on here. And it's amazing to see that you're getting 60, 70 percent open rates with this really personalized approach, keeping it short. Um, anything else before we finish up? Uh, no, I think it's the, you know, the kiss rule. Keep it simple, stupid. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I see so many emails that, you know, it's a three paragraphs and no one has time to read any of that. So, you know, it's just a quick and, and same with the sales calls. When I actually get on a phone call with someone, I actually don't do presentations. Uh, people think, oh, well, you have to walk them through the presentation. And I just I look at it as like I need to have a conversation to see where this person is at and and learn if they if they even have a budget or if they have any interest in this or where they're at in their journey. Um, yeah. And it's all about listening. It's all about understanding. And it's not about me throwing 50 things at the wall and seeing <laughs> six though. So, so yeah, that, that's the, that's how I like it. And mail shakes been awesome. 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 Well, yeah. Thanks again, John. Love your approach to sales, sales, emails, everything in between. So thanks so much for talking with me and um, yeah, we'll catch everyone next time. Have a good one. Bye.